Hi, my name is George Pearson and this special Photoshop Elements video is part of a series that I have on doing photography techniques for wedding photography. You can see a few examples in here from the different videos. Now all of these are using images that are available free on the internet and I have a link in the description for you to download the videos if you want to work with the same images that I'm using in my video demonstrations. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements wedding video, we're going to be looking at how to lay out and set up a wedding album page and set up so you can use this as a template and then change the pictures in here without changing the layout. Okay, we'll start off with just a quick look at this. This page is, as you can see up here, 10 inches by 10 inches, which is one of the standard sizes for a wedding album. It's divided up into quarters. Top quarter is divided in half with pictures here and here, and the bottom one is just combined together for a longer wide shot. Now there's a picture in the background, as you can see there. And for these pictures, these are just you know generic pictures. I have a bunch of stuff over here that I grabbed off the internet. These are all free images and I have links for this available. Let's just get these out of the way for now. There we go. And we'll start off by looking at how to create the actual page, actual page template. So I'll start by making a new file, file new, blank file. Because you're going for a printed output, you want to have this at 300 pixels per inch. And then our width is 10 and our height is 10 as well. So it's 10 by 10 at 300. And choose OK. There we go. Now we need to put in some guidelines in here so we can then see what it is that we are dealing with. Kind of line things up nicely. I'm going to zoom in just a bit here. There we go. Once we have our rulers showing, if you're not seeing your rulers, go up here to view and make sure that rulers are selected right there. Now we want to have a guideline one inch in from this side, one inch in from this side, an inch from the top, an inch from the bottom. Those will be our outside borders. So we can do that again, view menu and new guide right here. You can actually tell where it's going to be. This is a vertical guide. Put the position at one inch and there it is. It comes in at that one inch mark. I want it at the nine inch mark over here. So same thing, view, new guide, and just type 9 in here. Choose OK, 9 inches. You want to have a horizontal guides at the 1 and 9 positions again. So view and new guide. Horizontal this time. Position at 1 inch and do the exact same thing. New guide, horizontal, and position at 9 inches. That gives us our outside borders for our picture. Let's go back and take a look at the original file again. Let me just bring our photo bin back up here and bring that back up. Double click. You see here we have the one inch borders outside and then a half inch border in between for that nice little basic look. Now to get the half inch border we're going to be placing a guide at a quarter inch to the left and a quarter inch to the right of the center mark. Same thing down here, a quarter inch to the left, quarter inch to the right of that center mark. Okay, see how that's done. Now, the center point, because we're 10 by 10, the center point is 5 and 5. So a quarter up from 5 is going to be 4 and 3 quarters, or 4.75. A quarter down is going to be 5.25. So let's put in the guidelines at those positions. View, new guides to our horizontals first. The top one is going to be 4.75. It's a quarter inch up from that center line. And then the next one here, new guide, horizontal again. This is going to be below the center line, so it's five plus a quarter of an inch. And there it is. Same thing on the verticals. View, new guide, vertical guides here, and the same settings. So it's 4.75. This will be the left side one. And then view, new guide, vertical still, and this will be the 5.25. And that gives us that little half inch border in there. Okay, so there's our basic guidelines. 
Now we can begin to build the page once we have our guidelines in place. The first thing I want to do is to put in our background image in here, that bit of roses in the background. And let's just see where I have that. That was that one right there. So I'm going to double click on that and bring that up. There we go. Now if you don't have floating windows like I'm using in here, let me just show you how to do that very quickly. If your window is docked like this, just grab the tab and pull it down and the window should automatically float. If the window doesn't float for you, then check your settings. Go up here to Edit, Preferences, and General right there. And here we go, Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. That's when you want to have selected. If you want to be able to redock them again, click Enable Floating Document Window Docking. So make sure that those two are checked. General tab, Preferences. With that, you can then dock your window if you want to or undock your window. I find that keeping my windows undocked is usually very easy to do and it's especially nice if you want to take an image from one file to another because I can now just grab this, drag it over here, and there's my image. Notice that that comes in as a new layer. So I'll put this up here upper left hand corner kind of like that. I'll hold the Alt key down. Let's just stretch this out. When you do the Alt key, it it pulls it out, it stretches it out from the center of the file and it stretches it centered. I'm just going to put it kind of, kind of up in here someplace. It doesn't need to be really critical. Choose OK. And I want to just erase some of this background stuff. That's going to be hidden behind that picture, so that's fine. Move this up here just a little bit so it's right up on the corner. Remember, our picture is going to be right in here and then right down there. So I'm just going to soften up the edge a little bit on this. I'll do it with the eraser tool our eraser tool over here and let's get so we can take a look at our options here for the eraser tool. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we are on a soft brush. I'll just choose any soft brush, double click, there's our soft brush, and then bring the size up until we get a pretty nice size. That's pretty small. Again, this is a very big file. So keep that in mind. And then I'm just going to come in here and just kind of erase back in a little bit like that just to soften that edge up. That's all we need to do on that. Let's go back to the Move tool. And now let's fade this out. And that's just by using the Opacity setting up here. So just bring this down. Bring it way down about 19, 18, 17, 16. In here somewhere real low. Just real fade it out. Okay, so that's the first basic part of our document. There's a background, we have our guidelines in, and we have our background image. We're now ready to begin making the areas to put our pictures into. Alright, let's just take a look at our pictures down here again. Now we have three. There's this file. We have the picture for the bottom section, picture for the left side, and the right side. I'll do the left side first. Let's just grab this. I'll double click. Brings that up grab the image and pull it over here and that floats it on that window. Close that one down. Let's double click here, brings this image up, can drag that over, floats that image. I'm just getting them into my file right now. Get rid of that one and double click here. Let's pull this image over. There we go and close that one down. So I now have all of my images in here on separate layers. We now can do basic resizing of the images. Now again, in this case, I'm looking to get this inside of these guidelines down there. So, Alt key, pull that down, and let's just kind of position this inside of our guidelines, and there's a left side, there's a right side, just about, it's kind of snapping to the sides, that's good. I'll pull it up a bit. Right about in here, some places perfect, choose OK, and let's hide that layer. This bouquet is going to be going into this section right here. So again, let's resize this. I'll pull it over so I can find my control handles. They're here somewhere. There's the corner. Hold the Alt key so it pulls down from the center. And then I'll pull up from this side. I just kind of want to get this so that it, it fills that space nicely. And I'll pull it out a bit. And that's just about there. I think that's pretty good. That fills the area up real nice. Pull it over just a little bit and choose OK. Now hide that one. We're just positioning as you can see. Go here to 
This final image now is a little bit too small, so I want to enlarge this a little bit. Kind of like that. That should look pretty good. Move it over a little bit so that the, the wedding bands are inside of my rectangular area and choose OK. All right, we now have our three images positioned. Now I want to put in something where I can actually put these into a mask. Now let's click on this layer and I'm going to make a new layer above this. Let's come down to our colors. I'll set those back to the defaults and leave black as the foreground color here. Come up here to our marquee. Let's grab the elliptical marquee. Rectangular, actually, rectangular marquee from the elliptical marquee. Make sure you're on new. Make sure that feathering is set to zero. That's all fine. Now I'm going to go right here, upper left hand corner. Oh, one last thing to check. Let's go up here to view. Make sure that snap to guides is selected. And it is snap to guides. Okay. So that's all set to go. So go right up this, this little cross here right there. Grab from that corner, pull down to the bottom right hand corner. It's going to snap to those guidelines. Then we're going to fill this paint bucket with black. There we go. Okay and select deselect. That's the one for this, for the roses, left side. Let's go onto this layer, make a new layer at this point. This will be for the right hand side. Notice I'm putting the shape below the picture that it matches with. So, same trick, back to where the rectangular marquee tool, upper left hand corner, pull down to the bottom right hand corner of that area based on those guidelines. Fill that with black, there we go. Okay, next one. Let's go to that image, put a new layer, which comes in above that. So this is our, our layer for our wedding picture. Same thing, back to the marquee tool, upper left-hand corner. This time we're going clear across two of those spots over to the right-hand side. Now once you have your guidelines in, you can do this exact same trick, and you can put two across and two across, or two vertically, or do four squares. Just do the exact same thing here, pull the rectangle out to fit the area that you want to have your image into. And you'll see exactly how this happens in just a second. Okay, let's just fill them with black. There we are. Now for the magic part, go up here. Let's just bring our pictures back in again and deselect that. Click on the image above your shape and right click and create clipping mask or Go up here to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. Either one, you can see there it is inside the shape. Let's just do the dropping things in first, then we'll resize as needed. Again, same thing, right click, Create Clipping Mask. There we go. Up here on our top wedding image, right click, Create Clipping Mask, drops it inside just like that. Now, you can see what's happening here is it's putting the image inside of that shape and using the shape like a window to look at the image. Now because it's a window, I can grab the picture from on the picture layer and I can move the picture around. And if you go off the picture, you can see you're seeing that black area. So you can't go too far, but you can do a little bit of repositioning until it looks real nice for your picture. Okay, let's come over here to our bouquet and let's just adjust that just a little bit. I think right about there looks good. Let's go over here to this picture and I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now, last thing to do is to put a border on these. Now, you put the border on the shape layer. And we'll do that with a layer style, layer, and layer style, style settings, and they're going to be doing a stroke. See, there's the stroke showing in there. Outside stroke, that's what you want. And let's just bring the size up a little bit so it looks nice about like that in here somewhere. You can change the color of this black's kind of harsh. You can change the color by clicking on this little icon here and then choosing a new color or as you can see I can actually grab a color right off of my page. I'm just going to choose something in the pinks in here which kind of goes along with that background color and choose OK. Alright there's our basic stroke. Now that I have that, there's a little FX there I can right click on this layer and if it's just off screen and I'll show you what that is in just a second but you can right click and copy the layer style. 
Let's go up here to this one. Right click, paste layer style. And there is that stroke. Now let me show you where that is. Again, right click and copy layer styles right there and then paste layer styles just below it. That allows you to copy the layer style from one layer and paste it onto a different layer so you have matching styles. So I'll go over here, right click, paste layer style, and there we go, we have finished our page. Just save it, and then when you want to make a, a new layout, just do a save as, change the name, and then add new pictures. Now to change pictures in here, all you have to do is to delete this layer, put a new layer in the same spot, make it a clipping mask, and you're all set to go. Let's now hide all this excess stuff in here so you can really see what this looks like. Go up to View, and let's hide the guides, and there we go. Now looking at this, I can see a little bit of the thin black line right there. Just keep an eye out for those spots. That is the top picture. I'm going to edge that over, so I'm just going to pull the site out just a hair. Just like that, just enough so that I don't see that black line on that edge. But there you go. That's how to create a template for working with a wedding album. And again, because we have our guidelines in, you can drag that area, that shape, inside of any of that those rectangles, making your shapes, and then put your picture layer above the shape, clipping mask puts it inside the shape, and you're all set to go. Okay, there we go. That is how to lay out and design wedding album pages. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.